Welcome, welcome to another printer build episode. In today's episode, we are talking about the budget for the printer and also a little starter guide for Clipper. So last time we went into a lot of detail on the budget of the printer, and I have to say I was a little bit disappointed with the cost. I wanted this printer to be budget friendly for the base version. And some parts I thought were uh, just a bit too much. So we did consider changing some parts and changing the design to make it more budget friendly, but also keeping the quality. And I initially wanted to go for something like an orbiter extruder and a Revo Micro hot end, uh, but that was pushing over 100, actually close to 140 euro for both of those together. So I wanted to think of something else. So I've reconsidered and for the extruder, we are going to go for the Sherpa Micro extruder and for the hot end, the Bamboo Lab A1 slash A1 Mini hot end. If any of you have used the Bamboo Lab A1 or A1 Mini, you'll know that they're pretty good printers. I'm, I've been very happy with them. And you will also know that the entire hot end nozzle setup for the hot end is quick swap. You can just take it out like that and put a new one in, which makes it competitive with the Revo hot end in terms of versatility. But what is even better is the price. In the shop right now, the heating assembly is 25 euro and the heat sink and nozzle part is 15. So that's 40 euro for everything. That makes it very, very affordable compared to the E3D Revo. And for the extruder, maybe you are familiar with the Sherpa Micro Extruder by Annex Engineering. Maybe not. If you're not, this is what it looks like. They really went for a skeletonized compact design for it. It's actually just four 3D printed ABS parts, plus the motor, plus the internals kit, from a Bontech BMG extruder. If you have been into 3D printing for a while, you actually probably already have the internals kit from a BMG, or you might have the BMG extruder, or you might have a clone of the BMG extruder, which is great. And if you don't, then we also have the internals kit in the shop. In addition to that, you will also need a NEMA 14 stepper motor with 10 teeth on the gear, which we also do have in the shop. If you were to buy all of the parts for a Sherpa micro extruder, it will cost around 70 euro, which is comparable in price to the Orbiter extruder. But the difference is that the Orbiter extruder is considerably heavier than the Sherpa micro. And there is the bonus of you maybe having the BMG internals kit already. So it was logical for us. Plus, I also like that you have access to view the drive gear and manual control for the palm gear. I like extruders that have this. It's really just a personal choice, but the Orbiter doesn't have that. So with the changes that I have made to the design, that actually saves us about 40 euro, which is pretty okay. The Bamboo Lab A1 mini heated bed is however more expensive than the Ender 2 Pro bed I had suggested before, but it's way more available and I really wanted a larger bed. 185 millimeters is just the sweet spot and you guys wanted it, so here it is. And we have made progress on the physical design. The fan mounts and ducts are ready, and we are using dual 4040 radial fans for the part cooling and a small 25 millimeter 5 volt fan for the hot end cooling. It is quite small, and I very, very much want to do a thermocouple test when it's attached to the heatsink and the heatsink is turned on, just to make sure that it is actually sufficient for dissipating all of that heat, because it's, it's small, it's not designed for the A1 mini heatsink. So let's just be safe. Honestly, designing the print head for this printer has been the most challenging thing for me so far. It's really easy to design motor mounts and rod holders and things. They just need to have the measurements correct without much embellishment. But doing the print head, that needs that for sure. But it also needs a little bit of appeal, and apparently I'm not really that good at that. I'm very tempted to just mod a mini stealth burner design to fit the hot end and extruder. So I don't know, I'm, I'm gonna throw this out to you guys. Which would you want? Would you like a, something familiar, like a mini stealth burner design for these parts? Or would you like a total new design that is perfectly molded to those parts? Let me know and please choose the first one. There are actually designs for that already. I could use those. So in other news, we have been getting some requests for how to set up Clipper on your mainboard and your Pi. And this is the Pi that we're using. This is the BTT version 1.2. The BTT Pi version 1.2 is more or less a clone of the Raspberry Pi 3B. 
It has a 1.5 gigahertz processor, one gigabyte of RAM, integrated Wi-Fi, four USB 2s, a USB-C for powering it, a micro HDMI port, and an SPI port for displays, 12 or 24 volt power inputs too, in case you're using the USB for something else, an ADXL345 accelerometer port, a CAN bus port, an Ethernet port, and a fan port too for cooling. It also comes with a heatsink. Probably the most important change on this clone is the processor. It uses a different processor than the Raspberry Pi. It uses the same one as the BTT CD1, in fact. Because of this, the default image file that you get for installing Clipper on a Raspberry Pi is not compatible with it. So you need to go and get BTT's version, which you can find on their GitHub. We are using Bellina Etcher to copy the image files onto an SD card. It's best to use a low capacity SD card like an 8GB one. These are the most reliable. On the SD card you just flashed, which is called boot, there is a system.cfg file. Open that in Notepad++ or another appropriate text editor, and you'll see a section about the Wi-Fi. So just add your Wi-Fi details so that the Pi can connect to your home network. Save it and put it back in your Pi. Okay, to get access to your Pi via your computer, you need an SSH client. You have options here. I first started using PuTTY a long time ago, but I have come to use MOBA Xterm as the interface is better and easy to view the Clipper folder on your Pi, so I would recommend that. With the SD card now in your Pi, you can power it via USB 5 volt. If doing so, then keep the little red jumper on the pins in the corner here. If you want to use the 12 or 24 volt, then take it out. And make sure the Wi-Fi antenna is also connected. Now go to your browser and in the address bar type in https colon forward slash forward slash btt hyphen cb1.local and you'll have access to the interface where you can see the IP address. It is right here. You could actually just use the local address in mobile X term, but it could be useful to have the actual IP address. However, for us, that did not work. I think it is a security thing in the office because I could do this at home just fine, but if that doesn't work, then you can connect a normal computer screen to your Pi with an HDMI cable and a keyboard to the USB and power it up. Apparently, there are some compatibility requirements with which keyboards are suitable, but we're using a very standard office keyboard. This is a Logitech K120. The screen should boot and you'll find this showing. If your keyboard does nothing, don't panic, that's normal. Hit Control alt f one and you'll get access to the terminal and the prompt for the user and password. Both are BQ. Congrats, you should now be able to see the IP address which you will need to get Clipper working when you connect to your Pi via your computer. So let's do that. Load up MOBA Xterm, go to SSH and type in the IP of your Pi in the space for it. Then hit OK and enter the username and password and boom. We're in the terminal and you'll notice that you have access to the folders on the Pi on the left column. Now, as you can see in the prompt here, there's a tilde, which means we are in the main directory. And if we type DIR, we can see everything that BTT has provided for us. Crow's Nest, Clipper, obviously, Moonraker, Mainsail, and a little bit more. This is great, and you can continue with this if you want, but you can also install Kiao, Kaya, Kia. I don't know how to pronounce it, actually. I've heard multiple ways. I'm just going to say Kiao from now on. Kio is another tool used to easily install and update Clipper and other Clipper associated tools. It makes it easier, so I'm just doing it that way. There are steps that go into more detail on the Kio GitHub, which I have linked below. Okay, first things first, install Git. This is essentially allowing the Pi to clone files from GitHub repositories directly. We can do this by typing this. Git is installed, great. Next step is to get a Git clone of Kio by typing this. Now run Kia by typing this. You can install the new version if you want. If it's your first time, don't install an alpha. It's probably fine, but stick to stable releases when you can. Now we have access and we can see what we can install. You basically just need Clipper Moonraker, which allows an interface between Clipper and, well, the user. And of course, the interface itself for your browser, which is Fluid or Mainsail. So get those and also get Clipper Screen, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a tool which enables you to interact with a touchscreen connected to your Pi rather than your mainboard. And if you feel the need, install whatever you want, basically. For reference, Telegram Bot, Obico, Octo Everywhere, Mobile Raker, these are all tools to view and interact with your printer from basically anywhere. For us, unnecessary. For the minute. Now go to Advanced and Firmware Build, and here it is going to, well, build Clipper on your mainboard. So in the build options, we have all of this jazz. Looks 
terrifying for the first time, but don't worry. All you need is the default CFG file for your main board, which you can find on the manufacturer's website or the Clipper GitHub. We're hooking this up with a BTT Octopus Pro, so let's find that particular CFG. This we found on BTT's GitHub, and the first few lines contain the instructions of what to do, so you really just need to do that. Now just go back and save it, and it will compile everything that needs to be sent to the mainboard. And when it is compiled, you can see that it has created a hex file in the folder called out. This is in the Clipper main folder, which is accessible via the column on the left. And there it is right there, clipper.bin. Depending on your mainboard, it might not be a bin file. It might be a different extension. It just depends on your board. All you need to do now is put that on an SD card and rename it firmware.bin. To be honest, I'm not sure if this is still necessary, and it might depend on your main board. It's a habit from Marlin days for me. Then you can add the SD card to your main board, power it up, and wait a minute. To check if it worked, you can open the SD card again, and if it worked, it will have changed to the extension .cur. Or you could just do it directly from the Pi to the main board via the USB connection. You can see on the advanced menu, you have an option to flash only. Let's do that. As you can see, not all boards have this capability, so you would need to check to make sure that it can and whether it is connected via USB or in DFU mode. So my advice is just do the SD card route. Okay, once you have your firmware flash, there is one last thing to do, and that is to get that CFG file that you used before and copy the whole text. This is blank, basically. It's just a default thing. It just maps the pins for your main board and has default values for everything, but it's just our starting point. So go to your browser and put in the IP address of your Pi and it will load up whatever interface you selected. For us, this is main sale. And we immediately get an error as we have not added the CFG text yet. On the left column, go to machine and then to printer.cfg and copy everything in there. This is the holy of holies. Your CFG file will allow you to build your printer to whatever specification you want. This is so much easier than Marlin. Scroll down a bit to the MCU section and see where it says serial. This is the default serial ID that was on the CFG, but you need the right one. So go back to MOBA X term and in the advanced menu, you can see number five, which is get MCU ID. Go in there, connect your mainboard to the Pi via USB and select connection via USB. And now it gives you your MCU serial ID. Copy that and stick it in the CFG and hit save and restart. Now we get another error, but at least it is connected. The ADC out of range error just means that the thermistor is not connected. And that's it. Clipper is fully installed on your Pi and mainboard, which means you can get busy with the fun stuff, namely adding all the components to your printer and selecting them in your CFG file. For instance, we can change the micro stepping of a stepper motor. Maybe we're using a 100K thermistor for the hot end or something else. You can change the max temperature of the hot end, change the max speed and acceleration, change which stepper driver we're using, lots of things. Oh man, I really can't wait until we can actually get working on the CFG, but it's going to have to wait until we finalize all of the components and actually put them on the printer. So when we do that, we can actually build the CFG together. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you found our printer build interesting and you want to help us do it, you can also join our Discord server. We have a specific channel for the printer build. If you have any opinions you'd like to share or any suggestions on what we should do with the printer, you can talk to us there. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. And if you haven't subscribed already, then you can click on the subscribe button. It's around here somewhere. Thanks again for tuning in guys. And we'll see you next time. Later.